Welcome to the subnetting.net video series on how to subnet. This is lesson 2 which covers IP address construct, bits, and binary. There are three numerical systems that are widely used in the networking field. Decimal, hexadecimal, and binary. The prefix dec means 10, hex means 6, and bi means 2. You should already be familiar with the decimal system, which is the numerical counting system we all learn from a young age. The decimal system uses the digits 0 through 9. Hexadecimal means 6 and 10, or 16 digits. Hexadecimal uses the 10 decimal numbers and the first 6 letters. Note that when writing hexadecimal, you can use either upper or lowercase letters. You'll see both in use. Binary has just two digits, 0 and 1. In binary, the digits are also called bits, which is short for binary digit. You could think of a bit kind of like a light switch. It could be either on or off, like 1 or 0. In computer programming, oftentimes a bit is also used to mean true or false, or yes or no. Anything that has exactly two choices can be represented by a bit. To fully understand subnetting, it's helpful to know how to count in binary. But before we do that, let's briefly go over counting in decimals so we can see some similarities. Imagine that we start counting and write down all the numbers as we go. As you can see, every time we hit a power of 10, we have to add another digit. 10 to the 0th power is 1. Note that anything to the 0 power is 1, just by definition. 10 to the first power is 10. Now we've added a second digit. 10 to the second power is 100. Now we've added a third digit. Binary works similarly to decimal, except that instead of adding a new digit at every power of 10, we add a new digit at every power of 2. Here's what the numbers in binary look like. At each power of 2, we need to add a new digit. 2 to the 0 is 1. 2 to the first power is 2, 2 to the second is 4, 2 to the third is 8, and 2 to the fourth is 16. It's important to realize that binary and decimal numbers aren't actually different in meaning. They only differ in the way they are represented. For example, the number 16 in decimal is represented by the digits 1, 6, but in binary it is represented by 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. Both representations actually equal 16. They just look different. Now we're going to count in binary again, but this time we'll use the concept of bits rather than just counting the numbers. If we have one bit, then we have two possible values, 0 and 1. If we have two bits, we can represent four different values because each of the two values from the first bit can have either a 0 or a 1 in front of it. Notice that when we add another bit, we double the number of possible values. If we have 3 bits, we double again, which gives us 8 possible values. We duplicate the first two bits, then put zeros in front of the first set and 1s in front of the second set. Let's do it one more time. With 4 bits, we double again, and now we have 16 possible values. We duplicated the 3 bits, then add zeros in front of the first set and 1s in front of the second set. We chose to display them in this order because this is the same order we count in. Here are the decimal representations of each number. Now, since we are doubling every time we add another bit, we can use exponents to quickly figure out how many possible values there are based on the number of bits. The formula is n bits equals 2 to the nth power number of possible values. For example, with 1 bit, there are 2 to the 1 power number of values, which is 2 possible values, 0 or 1. With 2 bits, we have 2 to the 2nd power, or 4 possible values, meaning the range is 0 to 3. With 3 bits, we have 2 to the 3rd power, or 8 possible values, meaning the range is 0 to 7, and so on. Remember in Lesson 1 that we learned an IP address has four octets of 8 bits each. 2 to the 8th power gives us 256 possible values, 
and the range goes from 0 to 255. Here's a quick quiz. How many different numbers can be represented by 6 bits? If you need more time, just pause the video. The correct answer is D. Remember the formula is simply 2 to the nth power. 2 to the 6th power equals 64. Here's another quiz. What is the minimum number of bits required to represent 12 numbers? The correct answer is C. 2 to the 3rd power is 8, and 2 to the 4th power is 16. 16 is the smallest power of 2, which is large enough to handle 12 numbers. You can get more practice with powers of 2 in the subnetting.net math practice questions. To get there, log into your account and go to the practice page. Click on the link for view all question types. Note you won't see this link unless you're logged in with either a free or pro account. The first group of questions are the types you see on the subnetting practice page and also in the subnet game. The math question types at the bottom are only accessible from this page. These are designed to help you practice the types of math questions that are useful to increase your speed with subnetting. The first two math question types are directly related to this lesson. Here's an example. What is 2 to the power of 0? Well, that, by definition, is 1. What is 2 to the power of 7? That's 128. Note you can also hit enter rather than clicking the submit button. Enter also works for the next question button if you get the question right. Okay, back to the lesson. Now I'm going to show you how to convert a decimal IP address into binary. Let's take a random IPv4 address. 192.168.253.6 We'll start with converting the first number, 192, to binary. Each octet in an IPv4 address has 8 bits, so let's make placeholders for them. Remember that the number of different possible values doubles as we add more bits. So to represent this, we will write numbers underneath each position starting with 1 for the rightmost bit and double as we move to the left. 1 plus 1 is 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 times 2 is 16. 32, 64, 128. Notice these numbers are also the powers of 2. In each bit position, we must put a 1 or a 0, and we use addition to figure out which numbers go where. When we're done, the total of the numbers underneath that have a 1 above it must add up to our target number, which is 192. To accomplish this, we start from the left and move right. So do we need 128? Since 128 is less than 192, we know we need it, so we mark it with a 1. Now we add the next number. 128 plus 64 equals 192, and bingo, that's our number. We mark the 64 bit with a 1, and all the rest is zeros because we don't need them. Now let's do 168. We need 128. 128 plus 64 equals 192, which is too high, so we don't need 64. 128 plus 32 equals 160, so we do need 32. 160 plus 16 is 176, too high. 160 plus 8 equals 168, and we're there. We don't need any other bits, so we leave them as 0. Now let's do 253. We need 128, plus 64 is 192, we need it. 192 plus 32 is 224, we need it. 224 plus 16 is 240, we need it. 
240 plus 8 is 248. We need it. 248 plus 4 is 252. We need it. 252 plus 2 is 254. That's too high, so we don't use 2. 252 plus 1 is 253, and that's our number. Now let's do the last number, 6. We know we don't need 128, 64, 32, 16, or 8, because they're all too high. So we start with 4, and then 4 plus 2 is 6. That's our number, so we don't need the last bit of 1. Now we can put the numbers together to write out the entire IP address in binary. These numbers look quite different, but they represent the same IP address, just written in two different ways. Many calculators have the ability to convert between decimal and binary, and this may come in handy when you're first learning binary and want to check your work. For example, here's how to use the calculator built into Windows. When you first open the Windows calculator, it may be in standard mode. In order to use binary, we need to change into programmer mode. Click on View, and then Programmer. Notice on the left there are four different bases to choose from. Hexadecimal, Decimal, Octal, and Binary. We didn't cover Octal in this lesson because it isn't used very often. We're in Decimal mode, so let's type in our number, 192. Now we can click on Binary to see how it looks in Binary. Great, that looks just like the number we calculated. Let's try the next number, 168. Then we click on Binary again, and there it is. That's the same number we calculated. Click on Decimal, and then 253. Click over to Binary, and sure enough, that's the same number. And lastly, we'll do 6. And great, that's the same number we calculated. Notice it doesn't show zeros in front, and that's okay. Here's another quiz. Convert the decimal IP address 6.215.52.33 into a binary address. You can pause the video now to give yourself time to figure it out. The answer is as shown. If you didn't get it right, you could practice by picking random numbers between 0 and 255 and using a calculator to check your answer for each octet. This is the end of Lesson 2, which was on IP Address Construct, Bits, and Binary.